Okay, welcome back for activity two in how our electromagnetic fields can not only impact ourselves, but can impact other people around us. So when I told you that brains attune, what that means is if you are by somebody who has a high energy resonance field, your brain will start to shift into this more positive field. And this is shown by science. There's a most awesome study that showed that in Philadelphia, that had a very high crime rate and honestly i don't know where it is right now this study is um, a few years old but it had a very high crime rate at the time and a community of buddhist monks moved into the area and they lived there for a year they did nothing else except for live in the area they would walk to the grocery store they would go do their thing buddhist monks have very high control of their brains. They resonate at very high frequencies. So the fact that their high frequency, positive energy nervous systems were now embedded in this community with very low energy nervous systems, those of crime and those of poverty, what happened is the energy field of the collective was raised over time and the crime rate went down significantly with no other changes implemented. Mind blowing, right? So we know that brains attune from other studies also. So you can raise your energy to affect the people around you. In business, you can make people want to work with you. In your home, you can keep your children in a positive place just by using your own energy and not having to say a word. You can affect your partner. I try to affect the hubs all the time. I, I, I use the word try again. I don't try. I affect the hubs all the time. By It takes a lot of energy sometimes. But by resonating out at this positive energy field, if he's a curmudgeon, which I have started calling him more and more, I don't even know what's going on there, but if he's being a curmudgeon, I can shift him out of that field by not even talking and working harder to keep my field in that place. Okay, so let me tell you some of the emotional correlates, and I'm going to read a few of them that I've listed on my notes so that I don't forget them, but the name of the book that I referenced is called power versus force and that's one of the examples of what we're going to talk about and like i told you in the last lesson attached in this activity are screenshots from the book power versus force of two full pages of positive energy and the negative energy correlates and i want you to think about this so first we have power and if we're powerful, and the way I think of power is power from within over ourselves and not necessarily other people, but if we have power from within, then we don't need the negative energy correlate of force. Forcing somebody to do something is very negative in the energy field, but having the power to be the change is very positive. So positive energy correlate, power. Negative energy correlate, force. We know that the negative energy correlates resonate under 200. The positive energy correlates resonate over 200. Power over 200, force under 200. And below, please look at the two full pages of these different correlates of positive and negative energy, but I have just a few here. So powerful or positive is significant. Being significant, having significance, that's positive being important even though it feels just like a semantic shift being important is necessitated upon other people's perception of you and it's a negative correlate because it's ego driven it's you needing to prove yourself in the world but if you're significant and i strive to be significant i try to make my mark on the world whether anybody notices or not and i feel like i'm doing that which is significance to me i don't need applause because i've gotten good at applauding myself for my efforts and i am the significant change i'm trying to make striving versus struggling so when you strive and you're trying to become a better version and you want to create more for yourself out of an abundant attitude, it's positive. But if you struggle to get what you want out of a lack scarcity attitude, it's a negative emotional correlate. Abundant versus excessive. And I've talked about abundance here 
because an abundance mindset is important to me. That doesn't mean I want to get everything in the whole world. It means that I feel complete and that I'm striving for the significance that I want to create. Being excessive is once I achieve what I want or once I accomplish or once I attract, I need to keep going to keep proving my importance. So excessive goes along with those negative correlates. Ethical versus equivocal. So being ethical to people, regardless of what's seemingly equal, which is equivocal, being right and being an integrity and having dignity is a positive correlate. Being equal for the sake of equality, whether it's it's ethical or not, is a negative emotional correlate. We have intentional versus calculating. I've used the word intentional a lot. I just do it on accident. So being intentional in your work means you're on purpose and you're really thinking and you're thoughtful about it. And it might feel like it's calculating. Calculating is you're just trying to get to the next step and you're positioning yourself and it's not significance, it's importance. So hopefully you're getting the gist of how this is a very slight difference but it resonates negatively or positively. The last one is purposeful versus desirous. And I've already basically talked about this before. So what I want you to know is when you are on purpose and you're using the emotional correlates in the positive energy field, rather than the negative energy field, this is a two way street. It is called a feedback loop and I'm going to talk about it more in the next activity. But basically what a feedback loop for for the purpose right now means that the more you stay in the emotional state consciously, so you decide that you're going to be intentional and maybe less calculated, you'll resonate at the higher energy field through your actions. So it's kind of like taking the action that gets you at the energy field. And then we're going to talk about in brain training, getting you at the energy field. So it's easier for you to take the actions in those emotional correlate states. It's a two way street. And if you're able to go both ways, you can have a massively powerful change in your life to be able to attract what you want and keep your brain in the zone. Okay, follow me through to the next lesson. We'll keep going. I'll see you there.